Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Why Glamour Zone Motivation. Today, our motivation speech is titled, it's, it's very unusual title, it's titled Politics 101. The reason why I chose to make this motivational video that is with a focus on politics and election is that this year 2020 has been a very unusual year yes but at the same time a lot of things are happening around the world many nations in the earth planet are doing their election this year some have already done it, some are currently doing it, some are about to do this, and some are warming up to do it before the end of the year. So I felt that it would be a good idea to share some of the things that I've learned from God and also some of the ideas that I have derived from listening to some of the greatest teachers that have walked the earth. So one of the things I learned is actually the law of non-resistance from Alter Florence Scoversheen. So basically in her books, she wants us in the law of uh, non-resistance, she advises us or admonishes us that we should be very careful what we think about and how we behave to one another and how we behave to those in power. How we behave to our leaders, how we behave to our subordinates and how we behave to those, the people, the masses who we rule or we lead if we're in leadership position. So, the reason why she wants everybody to control their mind and be careful what they think, what they say, how they feel, and their reaction is that whatever you think manifests. Whatever you focus on enlarges. And your word is your wand. This is actually a book by Florence Kovacian. She wrote a book that is called Your Word is Your Wand. Apparently in that book... The word is more powerful than any weapon on earth. So what it means is that we need to be very careful in what we do with our words, especially when it comes to politics. I've come to realize that most of us are very careless when talking about politics or when thinking about it or when reading about it. Many people choose to have this less affair style towards it they don't really care but they are very very nasty with their words i do not blame anyone neither do i blame myself over the years for how we have reacted to our leaders or how we have reacted for those of us who are leaders or who are rulers how we have reacted to our subordinates i blame it on lack of awareness and a kind of Blindness, spiritual blindness, blindness that came over the world whereby people on earth did not realize how powerful they are and how powerful their thoughts are and how powerful their words are. So all these years we have wasted so much bullets, so much words, so much energy that we could have used for good. We have spent it on destroying one another, spent it on making our leaders into our image of them. Apparently, most of the people, they spend their time thinking bad of their leaders, feeling that the leaders are going to be terrible. And at the end of the day, they end up with terrible leaders. The leaders themselves, they spend their time believing that the people they are going to rule are monsters, are ingrates, and that they do not, that it's not going to be easy for those populace or their citizens to be ruled 
They spend their time thinking, oh, they're going to rebel against me. They don't love me. They did not vote for me. So they will hate me. And at the end of the day, the leader created his populace and his people, his followers, his citizens into his own image and into the words of his own mouth. So what we have had all these years has been a nation or nations who do not love their leaders or who are disgruntled by their leaders and leaders who are left confused and perplexed at their inability to satisfy their citizens. It is not one's fault, rather a misunderstanding and misconception on both sides. So now I'm going to try my best to put out this message out there in as simple English as I can master. So recently I made a video, a motivational speech, which says that you should bless everyone and you will bless yourself. Apparently, when you bless everyone and everything and every circumstances, because your subconscious mind is listening and the universe is listening and there is a lot of God we say that whatever we say comes back to us. Whatever we think comes back to us. It is done unto us as we do unto others. So it is very direct law and direct uh, command or explanation by our Lord Jesus Christ, by God himself, by all the teachers that God has sent to this world. They keep repeating it, repeating it over and over and over that we should do unto others as we have them do unto us. So basically, the key to having a fantastic citizen, this is for the leaders now, listen up. The key to pleasing your citizens, your people, your kingdom, your empire, your household, your company, your corporation, your office, whatever it is you do, your church, your religious organization, your non-profit organization, the comedy group, your stand-up, whatever you're doing, the school organization, the basketball team, and whatever and whatever you do, the key to leading them right, to making them love you and accept you, to pleasing them, is for you to bless everyone. Bless everyone. Wish everyone good. Do unto them as you want them to do unto you. Treat them with respect if you want them to respect you. Trust them if you want them to trust you. And expect good from them. Imagine goodness, kindness. Imagine that they will love you. Imagine that they will trust you. Imagine that they respect you. Imagine that they accept you. And automatically they, they will love you, they will respect you, they accept you, and they will support you. So, because whatever you imagine about them is exactly what they are going to, the, the energy you are sending out. It's the same vibration. So, as you send out the energy that they love you, and that you trust them, and that you believe that they love you, and that you, it is going to work out between both of you, is marriage made in heaven, between you and your candidate, your uh, uh, citizens automatically it will be so so the same message goes to the people who are choosing or voting or electing the whoever they are voting into office be it into a company into a family into a corporation into a, a religious organization non-profit organization into a gathering social event basketball team football team whatever it is let the people have good thoughts and send good thoughts to their elects. Let them send good thoughts to those who are going to rule them. To those who are going to lead them, let them expect good from them. Let them bless them. Spend more of your time building up your bosses than tearing them down. Don't tear them down. For there is no wickedness, no evil in the kingdom of God under grace. Pray for them, bless them, and believe that they will pray for you and bless you. Sometimes I sit back and I say, when was the last time we had a good leader in this world? 
When was the last time that the people, everybody 100%, were happy with the person they have chosen or the person who have been chosen to rule them? The truth is that it's not as if we have not been choosing good leaders. It's not as if God have not been bringing fantastic people. It's not as if God have not been bringing good citizens. It's just that the mind, the perception changed after a while. And people moved from blessing themselves and blessing one another to expecting the worst. So the leaders expect the worst from the citizens. And the citizens have been expecting the worst from the leaders. And it has been a disaster. So politics one-on-one teaches you to bless everyone. What it means is this. The leaders, the candidates, the politicians, whoever it is, the boss, newly elected, are about to be elected, should bless all the people they are about to rule, the, all the people they are about to take care of. They should bless them and imagine and see themselves that they are going into this office, they are about to take this position, or they are going after this position, that they are going there to serve. They are going there to make a difference. All the promises that they make, because I have seen on earth, there are so many promises whenever you want to be a leader. There are so many good things that a leader or potential leader or somebody aspirant who is aspiring to become a leader, a ruler or a boss or whatever they call themselves. They have such brilliant ideas of what they want to do. They have brilliant proposals. They have plan to revolutionize their kingdom, their world, their earth, their countries, their nations their village, their communities, their local governments, or whatever they call themselves, department, whatever they name them. But when they get in there, they fail. They don't fail because they want to fail, but they fail because of circumstances which is usually beyond their control. Now, if you could follow some of the advice I will give you on politics one-on-one, -on -one, this politics one on one will continue. It's not go this is not going to be the last time we'll talk about it or we'll make a motivational speech on it. This time we are just touching it because it's very vital that we just touch it so that people can prepare themselves. Nobody will give excuse that he lost the election because he doesn't know what to do. The world has changed. We have moved into a different timeline. This is a timeline where righteousness rules a timeline where vibration is very very active energy on earth have risen this time when you throw any object out it comes back to you it comes directly at you face to face it doesn't wait to go back to your children it doesn't wait for you to turn back it doesn't wait for you to die this is instant karma so you have to be careful the old ways of doing things on earth has passed. This is a new time. And in this new time, the best thing for you to do and be success as to be successful as a, a candidate, as an aspirant, or as even a citizen in any country in the world today is for you to bless everyone and be fair in your dealing with one another. So I encourage both the aspirants, both the people who are already in power, both the ones that want to go in the power, or those who are thinking about it, who are just considering it, and those who are about to be led. I encourage all of you to be fair. Bless everyone and bless all circumstances. Love one another. Love all the candidates. Think of the politics this way think of it as a game think of it in terms of soccer basketball or volleyball think of how the game is played although the competition can be so strong and you know sometimes harsh you get to hurt each other but not kill each other but at the end of the day you always say or let's say from the beginning of the game and in the middle of the game and at the end of the game, 
we towards the end of the game we always say may the best candidates win may the best team win the best way to look at it is may the best team win may the best candidates win you support you have your home team or your favorite team you support them and root for them but at the end of the day if you realize that the the opposite candidate the one that you is not from your side is the best allow them allow god that is the attitude say god let your will be done and may the best candidates win do your best not to interfere allow god spend most of your time thanking god for giving you the opportunity to witness this great event to witness this great person or to witness or to be about to take care of these great people see them as a blessing let the leaders see their citizens as blessings that they are about to inherit and let the citizens see their leaders as blessing that is about to take care of them blessing that is about to come i know that right now with all the things that has happened in the world it's a little bit it might sound kind of crazy to suggest to you to actually forgive everyone forget the past and embrace one another but i tell you that is the only key and the solution to end all the pain and the past failures in the world if you want to wipe away the past failures and stop them from repeating over and over and over you must do this you must bless everyone you must learn to tolerate one another you must learn to accept each other as a blessing and no longer as a cause spend more of your time blessing one another embracing one another loving one another wishing everybody good than speaking bad about people stop reading all the evil things on newspapers and magazines planting ideas into your mind of any candidate about any towards any candidate try to be fair some people wonder why is it that we keep getting the same guy over and over or why do is it that we my country has been ruled by the same guy for the past 28 years 48 years 10 years even some of them they cry and say why if there is god why would he allow only one family to rule my country for more than 40 years now so the answer is very simple because everyone in the country hates that family because everyone all the attention their energy is going into hating them thinking of them to lose each time there's an election all the citizens are wishing for them to lose this time that is spent wishing bad for those family or the person that is in power could be used blessing him or her and thanking god for giving them such an opportunity to experience such a person and thanking god for bringing another person that could challenge or stand up to the sitting president there is nobody that want to be in power forever it doesn't matter what people say nobody want to be in one place forever people love change but the reason why few people on earth decide to stay in power or be the president of a country like forever is because they are afraid that everybody hates them and if they step down that everybody is going to hurt them so if you can change your mind from today and start blessing your rulers blessing those in power or those who are about to go in power the ones that have stayed forever in power and wishing them good whenever there is an election you wish them good and you wish good to the new person that is trying to take the power it will make the sitting president the sitting king the sitting whatever they call themselves in the company know that it is fair it is just soccer i've never seen where people killed the whole opposite opposite team for winning at the end of the game the only thing i see is that they exchange their smelly t-shirts and throw it on each other's faces 
and hug each other with their smelly body and nobody ever say, hmm, you're smelling. Nobody ever say, why do you give me your smelly t-shirt? Everybody says, oh, thank you. I love you. I see you. I know you are brilliant. I love the way you play. I would like to hang out with you one day. Can you at least sign this t-shirt? Most people actually frame the t-shirt. They don't wash it when they get home. They frame it and hang it in their house. And nobody will ever complain that it smells. That is what we call love. That is what we call sport. That is what we call being fair. Embrace one another. Love one another. See this world. See this politics. See the election. Whatever you are doing. See the positions as soccer. Soccer is the closest thing that I can use to give you an example of games that are fair. People fight during soccer. You know, when they are playing it, when they are arguing over who uh, penalty kicks and who did whatever foul. And, uh, you know, sometimes at the end of it, they even fight and throw each other on the floor. But at the end of the day, they shake hands, you know, and then they walk together. So what I mean is this. Instead of hating each other and being nasty about it, I think it's time that we reverse the role. We reverse the way we do things on earth. In politics, in elections, in organizations, in the company, they all call it politics. Anyway, that's the word they use for when you want to choose a new leader, a new boss, a new uh, whatever that will take care of a group of people or a group of organization or a group of uh, religion or whatever. They call themselves, they call it uh, politics. That's the easiest word to summarize whatever it is. So at the end of the day, my advice is that you should control yourself. Let everybody on earth control themselves. Let them learn how to control themselves, control what they say. I want everyone to control their thoughts. I want everyone on earth to learn how to allow God. Allow God. Let him decide. Ask God, what is your will? Who is the fair person? Who deserves this seat? And trust God. Bless everyone. Do not resist anyone. Control your thoughts. Control what you say. Do not place a curse on, on any of your leaders or aspirants or candidates. Do not say, I hate this person. I don't want him to win. Rather say, God, I trust you. And I know that you have brought out all these people or these two people or these 20 people, whatever number of people are competing, say, God, thank you for bringing out these people. I believe that whoever, whichever of them wins will be good for me and for my people. Now I bless all of them. And I want the best person that is suitable for this position to win. The best person that can bring change the person that will be kind and loving to my people. Somebody that is ready to serve and somebody that will serve and that will, will be happy to be served as well. God, I allow you now to choose. Let it be your decision. For the rulers, for the aspirants, the candidates in any politics, election or whatever you guys are doing in any kind of organization, in any kind of kingdom, religion, whatever it is, school board, whatever it is that you are competing in. Say this, I bless all my people. I bless the people I'm about to lead. I bless this position. Thank you, God, for this opportunity for me to participate in this election or for me to participate in this competition. I'm very grateful. I know that everyone that is in opposition with me are not my enemies. 
I know that they are all qualified just as I am. And they are good just as I am. That I allow you, God, to choose. May the best win. This is what your thought should be. Stop resisting and stop spending your time thinking negatively about the other opposition. Rather bless the opposition and you will bless yourself. Bless the people that is going to vote for you or the people that are going to choose you. Do not get angry with them and do not manipulate them. Bless your people and allow your people to speak freely. This is very important for those who are already leaders or those who are currently wanting to be leaders or those who are planning to become leaders and bosses. Allow your people to think freely. Allow them to feel and express themselves. Do not be afraid that they will hate you. Do not think negative about them. Rather, expect that they will love you, they will accept you, bless them, and you will see automatically they will bless you. So for the both sides, in politics, all is fair in love and war. I do not believe in war, physical war, in any form. I do not believe that people should fight. Rather, I believe that people should celebrate. They should be happy together. I believe in fair competition. I believe more in collaboration than competition. But since the world have taught themselves to be in competition, to compete with one another, I want them to know why they are competing. That is not the end of the world. It's not a do and die game. It should be seen with the eyes of love, the eyes of fairness, Politics and elections should be seen in the eyes of may the best win. It should be seen as collaboration, not competition. In this new world, this new earth, I know that the only way forward is collaboration. For collaboration, attracts progress so what i'm saying is the conclusion is this always make sure when you are fighting with someone when you are wrestling when you are playing football playing soccer basketball badminton volleyball any kind of game that you are playing even if it's poker board games always leave room for reconciliation Leave room for partnership. Leave room for collaboration. If you spend your time competing during the elections, during the politics, if you spend your time trying to kill your opponents and your opposition, at the end of the day, if you lose, it becomes very difficult for any opportunity for collaboration in future instances and other things. So my advice to the candidates the leaders, and those who are aspiring to lead or to compete in an election is that you should listen to this advice. My mother told me when I was a little child, she said that when you quarrel with someone and when you play soccer with anybody, when you do anything with anyone, that you should always leave a room for reconciliation, a room for collaboration, a room so that both of you can be useful to one another. So for those of you who are into politics of any kind, who are in this race of election right now in 2020 and beyond, my advice to you is to take the advice that my mother gave to me. Play fair. Be fair and leave room for collaboration, for future collaboration. You play the game, you do the competition, you do the election and let the best win. And after that, shake hand, make up and kiss. And 
collaborate. Think of the best and wish your people the best. Believe that you are worthy of your people's love and acceptance. No matter how nasty they looked like to you during the election, always remember that a leader deserves his people and the people deserve their leaders. The same goes to the people, the citizens. Whatever happens, no matter how much your leader or the candidates gnaw their teeth and flex their muscles and look like monsters to you during the competition or the election, I want you to leave room for collaboration, make a room for participation, because at the end of the day, the best candidates will win. And the only way forward is to do what my mother said. She says, always leave room for reconciliation. Leave room for collaboration. Leave room for participation. So I will tell you something again. The people deserve their rulers. It is our mind, our thoughts, our imaginations that creates our leaders. So I advise you now, once more, as I conclude this motivation speech, think good of your leaders. Imagine good of your leaders. Believe that you, as a country, deserve the best person and the best love and care from a good person. Believe that God will give you, or God has already given you the best candidate. And when it comes up, whoever it is, I say them gladly and thank God and pray for them. Because what a leader needs to perform well and to be good is not bad wishes. It's not causes, rather blessings. And when you bless anyone, you bless yourself. So if you bless your leader, automatically your countries, your nations, your kingdoms, your companies, your offices, your teams will be blessed. Thank you and God bless you.